In this video, I'll explain how to approximate a decimal number with binary. Let's say that we have a number x between 0 and less than 1. What we want to do is find y where y approximates x. y is in the form 1 over 2 times y to the minus 1 plus 1 over 2 to the 2 times y to the minus 2 plus 1 over 2 to the 3 times y to the minus 3 and so on all the way up to n. 1 over 2 to the n times y to the minus n. Each of these yi's are either 0 or a 1. We're approximating the number x with a sum of powers of 1 over 2's. What we're going to do is find each of these yi's, either a 0 or a 1, that approximates the number x. Let's make some observations. We know that the number x will be between 0 and a 1, and we're going to be finding a y that approximates x. So y will be less than or equal to x. Since y will be close to x, 2 times x will be close to 2 times y. We know that 2 times y is equal to 2 times 1 over 2 times y to the minus 1 plus 2 times the rest of the equation. The first term 2 times 1 over 2 cancels out to be 1 and the rest of the term is a geometric series with some less than 1. When we multiply x by 2 what can we say about y minus 1? Let's consider the case when 2x is greater than or equal to 1. Then is there something that we can infer about y minus 1? Remember that y minus 1 will either be a 0 or a 1. So let's consider the case if 2x is greater than or equal to 1, can y minus 1 be equal to 0? Well, if this was equal to 0, then 2x will be equal to the rest of the equation. But we already know that this part of the equation is less than 1. So we cannot have that 2x is greater than or equal to 1 and have y to the minus 1 equal to 0. So what this tells us is that if 2x is greater than or equal to 1, then y to the minus 1 must be equal to 1. Okay, likewise, let's consider the case when 2x is less than 1. What can we say about y to the minus 1? Well, can y to the minus 1 be equal to 1 in this case? If it was equal to 1, then we will have 1 plus some positive number, so that this whole expression will be greater than 1. But here we're saying that 2x is less than 1, so this means that y to the minus 1 must be equal to 0. When 2x is less than 1, then y to the minus 1 must be equal to 0. So by multiplying x by 2, we know that if 2x is greater than or equal to 1, then y to the minus 1 must be equal to 0. Otherwise, if 2x is less than 1, then y to the minus 1 must be equal to 0. We also know that in the first case, since 2x is greater than or equal to 1, 2x minus 1 will be between 0 and 1. We can do a quick algebra. If we multiply this inequality by 2, then we know that 2x is less than 2. So 2x minus 1 will be less than 2 minus 1, which will be equal to 1. And on the left side of the equality, here we have 2x is greater than or equal to 1. So 2x minus 1 will be greater than or equal to 0. And combining the two equalities, we get that 2x minus 1 will be greater than or equal to 0 and less than 1. Likewise, in the case when 2x is still less than 1, we can go back to this inequality and find out that 2x will be still be greater than or equal to 0. And from this part of the inequality, we know that 2x is less than 1. Notice that we started out with the condition that a number x is between 0 and 1. And when we did 2x minus 1, or when we did 2x, but in both cases, this will again be between 0 and 1. We can repeat the same argument for either 2x minus 1 or 2x to recover y to the minus 2. Multiply these two number by 2 again and go through the same argument to find y to the minus 2. Let's put this into an algorithm. We start out with a number x between 0 and 1. We're going to approximate this number x with m bits. So we'll run a for loop from i equals 1 to i less than or equal to n. The first step is to multiply x by 2. So x is equal to 2x. If x is greater than or equal to 1, then we know that y to the minus i will be equal to 1. And in this case, what we did was we took 2x minus 1. Here, x is already equal to 2x, so we'll just say x minus 1 and then assign it to x. Else, x is less than 1, and in that case, we know that y to the minus i is equal to 0. Run this loop n times to find y to the minus i from i equals 1 to i equals n. Let's go through an example of the algorithm. We'll say that x is equal to 0 0.567 and we'll try to approximate this decimal number. On the first loop, we multiply x by 2 and we get 2x is equal to 1.134. Obviously, this is greater than 1, so this means that y to the minus 1 will be equal to 1. So what we do, we subtract 1 from 2x, 2x minus 1, and this will be equal to 0 0.134. 
This number will be used in the next iteration. In the next iteration, we start where we left off in the first step. So we say x is equal to 0 0.134, multiply this by 2, and this is still less than 1. So this means that y to the minus 2 is equal to 0. On the third iteration, we start where we left off, x is equal to 0 0.268. So we start off with x is equal to 0 0.268, multiply this by 2. This number is still less than 1. So this means that y to the minus 3 is equal to 0. Let's do one more step. X is currently equal to 0 0.536. 2x will be equal to 1.072. This is greater than 1. This means that y to the minus 4 will be equal to 1. Okay, for this example, we'll end our iteration here. Let's check how close this number is to the real number x. We have y to the minus 1 is equal to 1. So we'll have 1 over 2. y to the minus 2 is equal to 0. And y to the minus 3 is also equal to 0 y to the minus 4 is equal to 1, so to this 1 over 2, we add 1 over 2 to the 4. Using my calculator, this is equal to 0 0.5625, which is approximately equal to 0 0.567. Now, if you run this loop more times, for example, run it 100 times, then this number will be closer to our target number 0 0.567. Okay, so that was a video about how to approximate a decimal number between 0 and 1, converting it from decimal to binary. What you do is multiply x by 2, and if x is greater than or equal to 1, then we know that y to the minus i is equal to 1. Otherwise, y to the minus i is equal to 0.